Hello, God bless you. My name is Stephen. I'm the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship Church, and we're located in Brooklyn, New York. And it's time for today's daily devotion. This is where we take a chapter from the Bible. We read it together. We post these videos five days a week. They're available to you at any time, any day of the week. Uh, we're currently going through the Gospel of Luke. Luke, of course, is the uh, third book of the New Testament and uh, also the third gospel in order. Today we're reading Luke chapter 12, and Luke chapter 12 is on the longer side. It's uh, 59 verses. A number of subsections here. Uh, we begin in verse 1 with a warning against hypocrisy. We have the parable of the rich fool teaching about money and possessions. It's a good one. A caution to be ready for the Lord's coming. And then lastly, Jesus causes division. Let's read Luke chapter 12, verse 1 begins. Meanwhile, the crowds grew until thousands were milling about and stepping on each other. Jesus turned first to his disciples and warned them, Beware the yeast of the Pharisees, their hypocrisy. The time is coming when everything that is covered up will be revealed and all that is secret will be made known to all. Whatever you have <clears throat> said in the dark will be heard in the light. And what you've whispered behind closed doors will be shouted from the housetops for all to hear. Dear friends, don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot do any more to you after that. But I tell you whom to fear. Fear God who has the power to kill you and then throw you into hell. Yes, he is the one to fear. What is the price of five sparrows, two copper coins? Yet God does not forget a single one of them. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered, so don't be afraid. You're more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. I tell you the truth. Everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, the Son of Man will also acknowledge in the presence of God's angels. But anyone who denies me here on earth will be denied before God's angels. Anyone who speaks against the Son of Man can be forgiven, but anyone who blasphemes the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. And when you are brought to trial in the synagogues before the rulers and authorities, don't worry about how to defend yourself or what to say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what needs to be said. Verse 13, Then someone called from the crowd, Teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. And Jesus replied, Friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? And then he said, beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. And then he told a story. A rich man had a fertile farm and produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. And then he said, I know I'll tear down my barns and build bigger barns. They don't have enough room to store all my wheat and all my other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have stored away for years to come enough to eat and drink and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, you'll die this very night. Then he'll get everything you worked for. Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. <clears throat> then turning to his disciples, Jesus said, that's why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food to eat, or enough clothes to wear. For life is more than food, and your body more than clothing. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for God feeds them. And you're far more valuable to Him than any birds. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And if worry can't accomplish a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, He will certainly care for you. 
Why do you have so little faith? Don't be concerned about what to eat and drink. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts of the unbelievers all over the world, but your Father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and He will give you everything you need. So don't be afraid, little flock, for it gives your Father great happiness to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to those in need. This will store up treasure for you in heaven. And the purses of heaven never get old or develop holes. Your treasure will be safe. No thief can steal it. No moth can destroy it. Whatever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Be dressed for service and keep your lamps burning as though you were waiting for your master to return from the wedding feast. Then you'll be ready to open the door and let him in the moment he arrives and knocks. The servants who are ready and waiting for his return will be rewarded. And I tell you the truth, he himself will seat them, put on an apron, and serve them as they sit and eat. He may come in the middle of the night or just before dawn, but whenever he comes, he will reward the servants who are ready. Understand this. If a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would not permit his house to be broken into. You must also be ready all the time, for the Son of Man will come when least expected. Peter asked, Lord, is that an illustration just for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, A faithful, sensible servant is one to whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household servants and feeding them. If the master returns and finds the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. I tell you the truth, the master will put that servant in charge of all he owns. But what if a servant thinks, My master won't be back for a while, and he begins beating the other servants, partying, getting drunk. The master will return unannounced and unexpected, and he will cut the servant into pieces and banish him with the unfaithful. And a servant who knows what the master wants but isn't prepared and doesn't carry out those instructions will be severely punished. Someone who does not know and then does something wrong will be punished only lightly. When someone has been given much, much will be required in return. And when someone has been entrusted with much, even more will be required. I've come to set the world on fire, and I wish it were already burning. I have a terrible baptism of suffering ahead of me, and I'm under a heavy burden until it is accomplished. Do you think I've come to bring peace to the earth? No, I've come to divide people against each other. From now on, families will be split apart, three in favor of me and two against, two in favor of me and three against. Father will be divided against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. And then Jesus turned to the crowd and said, when you see the clouds beginning to form in the west, you say, here comes a shower. And you're right. When the south wind blows, you say, today will be a scorcher. And it is. You fools, you know how to interpret the weather signs of the earth and sky, but you don't know how to interpret the present times. Why can't you decide for yourselves what's right? When you're on your way to court with your accuser, try to settle the matter before you get there. Otherwise, your accuser may drag you before the judge who will hand you over to an officer who will then throw you into prison. And if that happens, you won't be free again until you've paid the very last penny. It's the end of Luke chapter 12. Again, a long chapter. Uh, a lot of... A lot of different teachings there. Um, I would submit that a common theme, certainly uh, one of them, is is the issue of material possessions. Uh, and that's a cause of anxiety for a lot of people. It would top the list if, if we took a survey, and, and many researchers have, and were to list the number one causes of worry or anxiety or um, fear in the lives of many. It, it's often around um, just those, those basic provisions, food, water, shelter, clothing, and, and the money it takes to provide those. And Jesus is saying, worry doesn't help. Worry certainly doesn't provide you those things. But when we trust God, uh, He does. God knows our needs. God wants good for us. And God will provide for us in an even greater way than He provides for, for all the other creatures on the earth. 
um, key here. Like that, that level of trust only comes from an intimate relationship with God. And so that's what Jesus is calling us toward. Um, he speaks of then being ready, being ready for Jesus' return. But the way that we're ready for Jesus' return is not to be sitting in some waiting room somewhere watching the clock, crossing off days on the calendar. He's saying be ready for the Lord's return by doing the Lord's work, by being active today, not waiting for tomorrow. The way that we're ready for tomorrow is to be active today, living a life close to the Lord and for loving those He loves. And the moral of the story is He loves everyone and He wants this gospel to be available to everyone so that they can know the truth. And so for those of us who follow Jesus, that's what it looks like to follow Jesus, to trust in God for our needs, not to be unwise, not to be foolish, not to be lazy, not to abdicate our own responsibility, but to trust God and to be about His work, about the expansion uh, of His kingdom. I'll stop there because this is already on the longer side, but thanks so much for joining us for this chapter in the Gospel of Luke. Hope you'll join us again next time as we read Luke chapter 13. God bless you.